This is a Dutch map by Pieter van der A, showing Ukraine, Azov and Kiev in 1707, just a decade after Peter the Great was living in the Netherlands, learned how to build a ship and seeking support to wage war with the Ottoman Empire. Peter had to return home when the Moscow Streltsy regiments, which had taken part in his Azov campaigns, revolted because they were redeployed instead of going home and were seriously short of food and equipment. These regiments marched on Moscow to force a regime change, but were beaten, tortured, and many of them publicly executed to silence others. Their families were expelled from Moscow. Roll call, January 17th, 1991. Our commanding officer is clear on one thing, if Operation Desert Storm proves to be more difficult than expected, we might be ordered to go to Iraq. Every few years the country is invaded by an aggressive neighbor. But sending Dutch conscripts like us halfway around the world had not happened since the war in the former Dutch East Indies. Oil is what made it different in 1991, not the horrific stories reported on television. When Russian soldiers are sent abroad to fight, do not restrict their access to information. For them, it is a life or death decision. In a modern army, it should not be befehl is befehl. In Dutch military training, you are told that it is possible you will be given an order you have to disobey. And surely, there must be a very good reason to cross an international border with an army to go and fight. Mr. Putin claims Ukraine is committing genocide, but at the recent hearing of the UN International Court of Justice, UN's highest court, Russia did not provide any evidence to back this claim. The leaders of the breakaway mini-republics of Donetsk and Lugansk nevertheless asked Russia to intervene. Actually, these republics only represent one-third of Donetsk and Lugansk. The rest had remained part of Ukraine. And according to the UN, their elections had not been fair. But Russia now claims they need to liberate the other two-thirds of the Donbass. The killing of civilians and according to the UN even war crimes are deeply disturbing. The so-called filtration camps and the intimidation by Russian forces make a UN-supervised democratic vote in the Donbass very unlikely. Mr. Putin wants Ukraine to lose its access to the Black Sea and the Danube by connecting Russia with Transnistria, General Minakayev confirmed on the 22nd of April. Russia is then able to stop all grain exports at will and continue to force Ukraine into submission they have already demanded that Ukraine officially accepts that Crimea is part of the Russian Federation. After again a fake election, the entire Ukrainian Black Sea coast is next. With this conquest, Russia will control the price of gas and food worldwide. And when Ukraine does not give in, we are heading towards a global crisis. Soaring food prices could lead to a second Arab Spring, with more violence than in 2010 to 2012. But Russia does not care about collateral damage. China and India are also unlikely to act until it turns into an economic crisis that hits their exports. The UN is a mere bystander, and Patriarch Kirill clearly failed to understand the core value of Christian religion, which was explained for the first time by Noah. Being true to his faith, he had to leave his hometown, away from the violence. Today, this would mean a patriarch has to distance himself and his church from the Kremlin. To sell this conquest at home, as with Crimea, there has to be something resembling an action and for a historical justification, although crucial facts are missing.
There is the article on the historical unity of Russians and Ukrainians by Mr. Putin. In the second half of the 18th century, following the wars with the Ottoman Empire, Russia incorporated Crimea and the lands of the Black Sea region, which became known as Nova Russia. In fact, the Canite was taken by force, violating the Non-Aggression Treaty of 1774. It is now used as a Das Erste Reich argument to justify the invasion. Displaying a lack of historical awareness, Mr. Putin expected his soldiers and their vehicles with a Z painted on it to get a welcome similar to the one in the Austrian Anschluss of 1938. I have read that fascist destroyers were marked with the letter Z, the boy says in the 1973 Russian cartoon Treasures of Sunken Ships. It starts with an ocean cleanup by kids to help a friend from another country. Three of them find an abandoned submarine, the Neptune, and explore the deep. They discover the wreck of a warship with the letters Z-29. Moscow-based Soyuz Multifilm took it offline. The Z markings and Neptune missiles finding and sinking the Moskwa is too much. But unlike today, the Soviet-era message is a positive one. Back to the German Sophie von Anhalt Zerbst, whom Mr. Putin admires. What did she actually do for the Russian people? As Katharina the Great, she had to deal with over 50 revolts, ending the largest peasant revolt Russia has ever seen in blood. Even worse, instead of listening to their grievances, in 1785, with a charter of the nobility, she secured the privileges of the nobility, which included owning the peasants born on their land and to pass justice on them. Today, nothing much has changed. Mr. Putin does not seem to care how many soldiers are lost. Not quite. This information is not updated because it would risk his political survival. And remember, he does not have the authority to send conscripts abroad to fight a war with Ukraine's regular army. The loss of the Moskva, with conscripts on board, needs to be labeled an accident. To help Mr. Putin to spread his own truth, the new Article 207.2 of the Criminal Code was introduced. You can now get a prison sentence for up to 15 years for telling that, according to Ozegova's dictionary, a special military operation is a war, with casualty numbers not seen since World War II. However, the Russian Constitution, Articles 2, 17.1 and 29.1, clarify the citizens' rights and freedoms. They are according to the universally recognized principles and norms of international law. But this clearly is no longer valid in Putin's Russia. What is already happening in areas close to the border? with family ties across it and where people also watch the foreign news. On April 7th, the Poskovskaya Krubernia newspaper reports on Telegram about the 60 paratroopers from Poskov refusing to serve in Ukraine. The truth is Mr. Putin's Achilles heel. That's why he absolutely needs to control the media. Remember, Boskov is where Tsar Nicholas II had to abdicate after having lost the support of his army because of the horrors they had to endure in World War I. And yes, Ukraine is a sovereign nation since 1991, confirmed once again when the Russian parliament ratified the Kharkiv Pact in 2010, agreed to by Prime Minister Putin 
and signed by President Medvedev. In it, both countries accept an extension for the lease of the naval port of Sebastopol until 2042, paid for by reducing the price for gas supplied to Ukraine. But in 2014, Putin and Medvedev had changed their mind. Or was it to increase the cash flow that is under Mr. Putin's control? Can we help the Russian soldier to make the right decision? It is therefore important to get a television signal deeper into Russia, not only border towns like Pskov and its rural areas, but as far as Russia's second city, St. Petersburg, where Putin's political career began and could possibly be brought to an end. Let's now first see why the reception of the DVB-T2 television signal is limited to around 67.2 kilometers. That has to do with the need for a free line of sight and the fact the world is round. We need to calculate the height for the antenna, delta H. For a distance of 67.2 kilometers, the antenna must be at a height of 354 meters which could be less when the receiver antenna is placed on a roof. But there are two problems if you want to cover most of St. Petersburg from Narvao in Estonia. With 137 kilometers, it is twice the distance and the signal strength decreases with a third route of the distance. The solution Instead of transmitting 8 to 10 different television channels, we can have them work as one by putting the transmitter in SISO mode, that is, single input, single output, reducing the number of channels from 9 to 1. The coverage is increased by the third route of 9 to approximately 140 kilometers, that is, one in reserve. 134 kilometers with 8 and 145 kilometers with 10. But substituting this value in the formula, the antenna now needs to be at 1538 meters instead of 1474 meters. Next, we need to check the surface profile from Narvao to St. Petersburg. To see if there is something blocking the line of sight. In this profile, the Earth is presented as a flat surface. This means that the straight line of sight is now transformed to a curve. For this line, we now need to use the formulas again. The hills near the coast are not blocking the line of sight. With the antenna at 1473 meters, there is, however, a margin of only a few meters. It is therefore possible there are trees and buildings blocking part of the signal. With the antenna at 1750 meters, there is a margin of about 75 meters. The second problem, this height, can be solved by using an Israeli Atlas 06E airship. The electric airship can remain stationary at 1,752 2,000 meters for many hours. It has a crew of two and can carry eight passengers. So taking out these chairs, a television station with a maximum of about 800 kilograms can be fitted. Combining nine or ten channels should result in a strong enough signal. With only 8, it might be necessary to improve the signal getting into St. Petersburg by using a directional antenna. In Russia itself, the viewers could further improve the reception by using a good quality antenna, which are not expensive. It is even possible to make your own following instructions on YouTube. So let's deploy one at Navao to cover St. Petersburg. One ship based in international waters east of Yalta, covering most of Crimea. 
want to cover Minsk in an effort to prevent Belarus from being used again for an attack on its neighbor and see where the combat units are coming from, like the 136th Guard Motor Rifle Brigade from Dagestan, that is in range from Georgia. This system of airborne television stations can be deployed in other future conflicts to counter toxic lies and false information for political or financial gain. It could be a useful tool to prevent wars. In 1799, a combined force of 40,000 Russian and British soldiers landed in the north of Holland. In this special military operation, it was expected the Dutch population would see this as a liberation, because William of Orange, the former ruler, had called on them to revolt. But the Dutch didn't. After taking the north of Holland and the Dutch navy anchored at Den Helder and Tessel, the operation stalled. There was not the expected welcome. Finally, the French and Dutch forces regained full control over Holland, but the losses were enormous. On the Arc de Triomphe, this Alkmaar victory can be seen next to the Zurich inscription. In both victories the losses were huge. The French government resigned a few weeks later, and the military strongman saw it as an opportunity to take over. Twelve years later, this General Bonaparte began his invasion of Russia, but failed after advancing as far as Moscow. Bonaparte finally realized Russia is too big, the climate too harsh, and its people can endure enormous hardship. Russia can only be conquered from within, by Russians. As more and more facts come to light in Russia itself, keeping Russian forces in Ukraine could and should eventually trigger a regime change. Putin's war is getting as brutal as the siege of Leningrad. However, it is unlikely that Russia will pay for the immense damages it has caused. The EU should therefore ban any new gas and oil contract with countries that are at war with one of its immediate neighbors, as this poses a threat to the security of the EU. But no ban on Russian gas. It will be allowed to buy Russian gas from Ukraine and Belarus. This is because the announcement to ban Russian gas within one or two years increases the risk for an all-out attempt to conquer the entire Ukrainian coastline. Russia wants to remain a dominant player on the world stage, if not with gas and it needs to have control over the Ukrainian food exports. The EU should allow Ukraine to levy a mutual agreed-upon tax of up to 100% until the costs of the war are paid. Gas supplied through Belarus or others will be taxed in the EU on behalf of Ukraine. To send the signal that the EU is seriously considering this idea, the EU should immediately start working on a new tax deal with Ukraine in order to halt the war as soon as possible.